to session six. In this video, we want to talk about warm-ups and flexibility. And what we've covered so far is, you know, we first started off by looking at some heavy stuff, the metabolic demands of MMA. We talked about energy systems. And then we talked about how to train those energy systems to bring about specific improvements in your endurance. That's session two, building unstoppable endurance. And then we went back and looked at some basic theory about muscle structure and function. And then we talked about in session four, how to convert that information into actual programs to enhance muscular strength and power and endurance and even various components, you know, hypertrophic phases and things of that nature. And with all of this high intensity training that we showed you how to do, we in session five talked about how to avoid overtraining because you can increase your likelihood of doing that. Uh, when you're training at a high intensity, especially with high volumes. In this session, we're going to talk about warm-ups and flexibility. In session seven, we're going to talk about how we put all of this stuff together in one periodized training plan. And we're going to finish off by talking about how we test and evaluate and make sure that we're monitoring uh, changes in our, in our adaptation to training. So there's a couple learning objectives that I really want to hit here. First, I want to identify the benefits and components of a pre-exercise warm-up. We're also going to talk about cool downs as well. I want to talk about the factors that influence flexibility after that, and really the, the rest of the lecture is dedicated to flexibility and joint range of motion. And we're going to spend some time talking about flexibility exercises that take advantage of a certain type of stretching technique called proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation or PNF stretching. It sounds complex but you'll get it. And finally I want you at the end of this to be able to select and apply appropriate stretching methods to increase joint range of motion. That's the big goal here. And so this is the broad categories we're going to touch upon. One is warm-ups and then two it's, it's flexibility. And so let's dig into that first section here, just warm-ups. So the main goals of a warm-up include mentally and physically preparing you for exercise or competition and ideally reducing the potential for injury. And there are a number of positive effects that might be had from a good warm-up, including decreased reaction time or decreased viscous resistance in muscles, which may actually translate into faster muscle contraction and relaxation. You're probably going to see an increased rate of force development, which is going to translate into increased strength and power. You're also going to see increased blood flow to active muscles, and that's going to increase oxygen delivery via the Bohr effect, which basically just says that you can increase the liberation of oxygen from hemoglobin inside red blood cells. And you may also see some enhancement in various metabolic reactions. Now, in general, a warm-up consists of two separate parts. First, you have the general warm-up, and this normally lasts about five or ten minutes, and it features whole body, slow activities like jogging or skipping. And you might include basic sports-specific skills like shadow boxing here if you want as well. Now, the second part of the warm-up, it gets more specific, so it's called the specific warm-up. And it generally lasts 8 to 12 minutes and it features dynamic stretching and specific movements. And these movements, they really need to relate to your intended workout. It's important that you also build intensity and specificity towards the end of the warm up to match what you plan on doing in your workout. Now, one question that comes up a lot is whether you should stretch during your warm up, that's before your workout. And it's important to understand that there are positives and negatives here. For example, on the plus side, stretching in your warm-up may increase technical skill performance. Some movements just require a lot of flexibility. But on the negative side, there is actually little evidence that intense stretching before your workout, or even after your workout for that matter, prevents muscle soreness or potentially prevents injury uh, risk, depending upon what you're doing. But more importantly, at intense static stretching and intense PNF stretching, that may compromise your strength and power development. And you may not have heard of PNF stretching before I mentioned here. Again, it stands for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. And it, along with static stretching, can significantly improve joint range of motion and flexibility. They actually may do this by activating a sensory organ in your tendons called the Golgi tendon organ that may prevent your muscles from also generating a lot of force. So that's the downside. Now we're going to talk more about this later on, but for now I just want you to know that there are various pros and cons to stretching.
So here are some examples of how your warm-up will subtly change across your fight plan as you target different energy systems. Now, when you're targeting the aerobic oxidative systems, which you now are familiar with, you should maintain a heart rate of around 35% of your maximum until you start to sweat. When you're targeting the anaerobic glycolytic system, the goal is to increase baseline oxygen use without too much fatigue. So you wanna warm up for five to 10 minutes at about 70 to 80% of your max heart rate, and then you recover for about five minutes before the workout. Finally, if you're targeting the ATP PCR system, the goal really shifts to increasing muscle temperature, but allowing enough time to resynthesize phosphocreatine before your session. So you'd warm up at about 60% to 70% of your max heart rate for five or 10 minutes, followed by five minutes of recovery. You'd also want to avoid explosive movements before as this may deplete muscle glycogen and that can impair your performance. Now, I'm gonna show this slide to you again in the step-by-step uh, guides for, for building, you know, uh, whether it's endurance or strength or, or peak performance, wherever you're at. I just wanted to quickly introduce you to these now because it's, you know, it's a topic that we're discussing. So now that we're talking about warm-ups, we might as well say a couple words about cool-downs. It's very similar. Now the optimal method to remove lactate, which can build up during high-intensity workouts, appears to be to complete a cool down for about 20 minutes at a pace that is just a little bit higher than your self-selected pace you know, whatever you're comfortable with you just want to be a little bit higher than that and you want to choose whole body movements it's probably the best and so cool downs aren't particularly you know complex and you know, i'll show you this slide later on when we're actually planning training sessions but again i just wanted to to, to get on your radar now okay so let's now transition to to talk about flexibility